Okay, welcome back. This is the, the third circuit diagram, the third phase of the Slayer 007 pulseless, I'm sorry, the rotorless pulse motor, and he calls this the pulse generator. This is the pulse generator circuit that he has come up with, and it does work. And uh, he's coming up with some really, really good circuits here. And um, it's different than what I've experimented with before, but they sure do work. I really like what he's doing here. You know, I've got the kitchen countertop thing going on again here. Um, it's just easier to do it this way, I found out, to, to show what's going on. Uh, I've added a couple of twists to it. I've got a 10-watt solar panel out there that is feeding into a source battery here that is being controlled with a controller and this controller I'm eventually going to set this up as a permanent thing probably with my 40 watt solar panel uh, we'll charge up this battery here to seal lead acid you could keep it in the house uh, as long as you have a controller with it it won't hurt anything and uh, the voltage will come up to 14 uh, 0.2 volts and then uh, this will turn it off and that green light comes on and I really like that you just let it sit there all day long and it just stores up there goes the green light and so she's charged up but uh, yeah with that 10 watt solar panel I'm pretty sure that would run this system uh, at least here in California all the time so anyway um, what I've got is his circuit here and this was the part that was the most interesting to me on this circuit was this part coming over here to the coil that when you disconnect that and, and uh, basically drop off the light the um, charging is phenomenal <laughs> if you wanted to use this as a, as a conditioning radiant uh, charger that part right there is what really interested me but uh, one of the things I, I did here was I'm using a little neo magnet right there to trigger the reed switches and I just put it on a clove jar that's what that is right there there's nothing but it's just a plastic jar but I wanted to explain that that um, I just put this onto a, the jar as a, a way to adjust the uh, reed switch here that's a reed switch on a bifiler coil going into a bridge rectifier on the secondary going into a capacitor and then I'll show it going into this charge battery and um, I've got the CFL here and I've got of course the ignition coil and that's the breadboarded uh, transistor circuit with the protection uh, neon that protects the transistor from high voltage um, this is over here is voltage on the source battery somebody was asking me I wasn't showing the, the voltage on the source battery and uh, you can't see that very well but the, the white mark is about uh, 15 volts so like I say she's just about charged up right now this is the voltage I'm going to show. This is the most interesting part on the capacitor. This is a big 1300 microfarad 100 volt. Uh, he calls for a, a bigger capacitor, but it does work with this. And this is my amp draw on the system right now. Everything is zeroed out. This is my switch right here. I'm going to turn the system on with that magnet. And that magnet's going to hit these reed switches and make them go into an oscillation triggers the bifiler coil, runs the whole system. Uh, right now I do have this hooked up right here to show the CFL and the light that comes out of the CFL with the amount of amp draw and the amount of recovery that's coming in on the capacitor. Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to try to do this so you see both at the same time. It's daylight, so this light is very deceptive. It's, of course, brighter at night, but here goes the system. There goes the light. Now I'm drawing more amps than he uh, talked about because of my bifiler coil. I don't have enough windings on the bifiler coil to make this work like he said, but it does work. There's my uh, amp draw, 140 milliamps. There's my capacitor voltage, and I do have it loaded down with a 110 volt night light right now. I don't have it connected to the charge battery. It's not connected. That's just the night light. I'll turn the night light off. Watch the voltage go here. And there goes the voltage right on up. And this just climbs right on up. Amp draw. I'm trying to do this between 100 and 150 milliamps just to show stuff going on. 
Okay, that's up to 50. I'm going to turn this on again. There's the uh, light. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disconnect the CFL ignition coil. That is this part right here. I'm going to disconnect that right here. Now, what I want you to watch when I do this is the charge voltage on the cap. Watch that. I don't know if you can see the light too getting on brighter, but this just goes nuts. I mean, this is what uh, I haven't seen anything like this before. Now, if I turn, and that's holding 50 volts on a capacitor under load. That's a 110 volt night light. That's the load on this capacitor, and that's holding 50 volts at a 200 milliamp draw. And that's impressive, folks. That's very, very impressive. Now, I'm going to do one other thing here. I'm going to turn this off by taking the uh, magnet away. The capacitor is going to drop down. And I'm going to turn off the night light. I'm going to plug in the charge battery. I'm going to turn this to a little higher scale and fire this off again. There's the standing voltage on that 12 volt lead acid. I'm going to turn this on again. Look at the voltage climb on that battery. And this is a battery being charged, folks. This isn't a capacitor. This is a battery. I'm going to slow this down a little bit. I'm moving this magnet away a little bit so I don't zap this too much. You'd almost have to have a charge controller on this charge battery. It's getting zapped so much. Okay, now I'm going to unplug it again and watch the voltage on the cap just go nuts. And this goes on up to 130, 140 volts. I had to shut it down, otherwise I'd burn out this bulb here. And he was talking about 190 volts that this thing's putting out. And there's my amp draw, 170 milliamps. This just goes right on up. Very, very impressive. There's the light. So anyway, um, his circuit here, uh, this um, Slayer number three is a real winner. The only thing that uh, I have some concern about as far as I'm concerned with uh, what I'm dealing with is the CFL part of it. Now, the light, to make the light go bright, you've got to zap the amps to it. You see that go bright? Now you can get the brightness you need with the system but it costs you. It costs you on amperage. And that's the thing that we've all fought with for months and months is bang for the buck. How much light do you want for how many amps you're going to you're going to pay? And this this circuit is no different. You just uh, you you get what you pay for as far as light is concerned here. Now the good thing is you could load up multiple lights here. Two, three, four, five lights, and it won't affect this that much. The way these things are circuited in series or even in parallel, the CFLs don't draw that much more amperage uh, when they're when they're on together. So, anyway, that's his circuit, and this is number three. And once again, it's a major winner. I'm going to pan this real slow so maybe you can duplicate his stuff. It's also over at the Energetic Forum, but uh, you have to sign up there to be able to download the circuit. So maybe you can stop this, freeze frame it and see it. And uh, this is um, the Slayer 007. G. Bluer is the uh, inventor and uh, he has done some real, real good stuff here. I highly recommend this circuit. This is a winner.